What's up? What's up, YouTube? Welcome back. Welcome back. Let me just very officially fix my papers. Uh, change of surprise, uh, surroundings. Um, a lot of things has happened. A lot of things are happening, and I'm excited. I'm excited. So this is um, so so. This is watch number two in our collection uh, that we're building, and I wanted to. Uh, actually, I wanted to take the the time to. Uh, show that here is here is actually the collection it's going to be stacked in this wonderful wonderful case that i picked up uh at a superb price but enough about that um as you can see surroundings are different um and 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 uh i might even have had i might even have gotten a bit of a tan the weather is fantastic which is also one of the reasons why i've been delayed with this because uh, we've been moving from one location to another and the setting, the lighting and all of these different things has been a bit of a test and try. Um, and as we find a proper location on how to do the videos with lighting and all of these different things, everything is going to change. Now, today, I am most probably going to divide and conquer. I'm going to divide and conquer with the fact that I think that this company that we're going to have a look at is 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 one of those companies that really is um I think it divides it down the line, okay? I think think that if you're looking at uh the horology community, it's going to divide it down the line and there's going to be haters and there's going to be lovers, okay? I mean, I know that, I have seen that and I, to be honest, I, I, I don't partake in, in this uh, love it or hate it because I think we have to talk about objectivity and I think that we have to talk about not so much about like, um, I just think that there's a lot of negativity around this company, to be honest. Since this is part of, of my challenge, my five watch challenge for a thousand bucks, um, one of the disclaimers I have to admit upfront is we are on a tight tight budget and i think that this piece here fits within the budget perfectly so the company we're talking about today is invicta and i've already done a video on invicta that's on facebook but i wanted to start on a fresh with invicta because i actually get to appreciate the company much more with i, I would say like with age but but that's not actually uh the case because um, I, th I think I appreciate it a lot more because of I had a piece already, which was it's 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 OK. But I really do think that this piece that I've been that I picked up uh, for this challenge specifically is a piece that when you understand what's the background of it and what it actually like the purpose that it serves, it actually does an amazing job. Now, Invicta is actually, it's for me, it's a very, very interesting company, right? It, it's not like many people would say like, yeah, but it's this is like, you know, US company and all of these things. Yes, it is in Hollywood. It is in Florida. It is in the United States. And now it is an American company by ownership. By origin, this is actually a Swiss company. This is actually a Swiss company that uh, is really, really old. Um, so we are dating back, Invicta is dating back to 1837. Um, so you can see that it's got a couple of years on its behind, right? It's got, it's not a new company. It's not a fresh company. Um, but there was, and it was, it, it was, it was really founded as a Swiss made company or Swiss company, right? Uh, by uh, Raphael Picard. And, and so it's very, very interesting because the craftsmanship that went into Invicta right from the get-go was incredibly beautiful pieces, incredibly uh, well-crafted pieces, incredibly good quality pieces at a very, very affordable price. Now, you can argue that's always the, the, the mission or that's the vision of everybody that started in the 1800 that they wanted to make it affordable. But over time, Invicta has been very, very true to the aspect of its affordable watches. It's actually good quality watches, some obviously better than others. Um, but and, and and by the way, Invicta still does uh, a selection of Swiss made watches. And then, of course, they've got the, the non Swiss made as well. So it's kind of like you can get both if you are willing to pay the price, if you're willing to look for it and all of these things. But so one of the things that that is really, really interesting about Invicta was that if you are looking at really, really vintage pieces from Invicta, 
it's almost impossible to find them. Uh, nobody is selling the pieces. And why is that? It is because the, 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 the vintage pieces from Invicta is of superb quality. And in my honest opinion, I've looked up some of them. Not that I'm planning on buying a pocket watch because I think that it doesn't go with my style. But they, they are incredibly, incredibly cool. They are really, really nice pieces. They're not selling. You can't find them anywhere. You can literally not find them anywhere. You can find the new ones, the adventure models, the this, the that, the oversized, what have you. But the cool, cool pieces with years and years on, on, on the back, you can't find them. Because they're sitting in watch collections that are not going to go anywhere. Which is, I think, in my opinion, a testament to what the company really was, what it used to be. And that is incredible, uh, incredible technology at that time. And really, really cool, cool pieces that just, I mean, they are just collectibles. Now, one of the things that, so Invicta uh, is this, this whole thing, invincible or indestructible, which is, you, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of like playing with, uh, with the aspect of we are making something that is of so high quality that you cannot destroy it, which is, I mean, respect for that one, right? Cool for that one. The biggest problem that Invicta had, and, and, and I think that's really where we started seeing a lot of issues was, again, with the quartz attack in the 70s, right? Um, and, 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 and I think that, so I think where many watches uh, or watch companies been struggling and potentially came out on the other side as a winner because either they embrace the technology uh, or they stay true to their fan base and their designs, or they cut down on some of the designs and, you know, really cleaned up the, 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 the production line and only had, you know, a few selected uh, uh, models that they were going with. I think that is really where it started going wrong for Invicta. I think in the 70s with the Quartz attack, I really do think that that was, you know, like, I wouldn't say yeah, the, the beginning of the end because it wasn't. Um, so what happens then is that around 19, so the 70s is brutal for, for Invicta, brutal, brutal, like, like really, really tough. Like they, I mean, uh, I wouldn't say close to bankrupt, but it doesn't look financially very healthy for the company. Um, but in 1991, um, they then get bought by corporate America, becomes an American company, gets the cash infusion. And... Also, a slightly uh, refresh of the mindset that we want to make gorgeous pieces, um, we want to make them high quality pieces, um, and we want to make them affordable. So basically, what you have right now is that Invicta is a company that makes watches basically for all types of taste. And so this is where I start to have a bit of an issue with the company because I don't believe that you can cater and make a watch that everybody will love or a range of watches that everybody will love. Um, and I think that's too aspirational that you do something like that. Now, um, is this uh, the biggest problem I have with the company? Yeah, I, let me put it differently. I think Invicta has an identity crisis. I don't think that it has, I think that it has a bit of a brand issue and a bit of an identity crisis because right now they are more known for bulky pieces that looks basically, in my opinion, um, and again, I, I, that is my opinion. Your opinion might be different, but my opinion is they are oversized. They are like, like they are too flashy. There's too much of all of these different things. Um, I don't think the value retains that well of, of, of these pieces because they almost remind you of fashionable pieces that is like in and out of, of, of fashion. Um, and, and, and in general, I just think that it, it, is, it reminds me of a Frankenstein piece where bits and bobs are put together and trying to make look cool and all of these different things. So I think that they have a massive, massive identity crisis. Um, I think that, that, that that is really one of the reasons why there is so much um, there's so much emotion going on around uh, Invicta. Personally, my experience with Invicta is some of the designs I absolutely hate. But the one that I'm going to show you now is actually really, really cool. And so that's where I'm puzzled, right? Because on one hand side, you look at them and you just go like, these are terrible pieces. They are dreadful. They are absolutely horrendous. And then you look at some of the other ones and you go like, oh my God, that, that, that's actually really, really cool. Um, so, but 
okay, it is what it is. Um, the thing that that appeals to many people, and and I think it is it is something that has a real strong appeal, is price versus quality, and we'll get back to that. But they are very very true to the mantra or to the to the to the setup of the company, which is durable, high quality products at a very very affordable price. Now. The one piece that we're looking at, let me let me let me pause for one minute here and then explain why I actually chose this piece. Now, there comes a moment, <laughs> there comes a moment in every watch collector's life, okay? Every watch collector's life, where you are looking for the Submariner 40 millimeters. Absolutely comes that moment where you are looking at that 40 millimeter design and you say, a, I'm going to break the bank, take out all of my money, and I'm going to pay, what is it now, $10,000 or $12,000, $15,000 for that piece, the Rolex Submariner 40 millimeters. I'm going to buy that because it's a timeless design. It's an absolutely incredible design. It's just one of those pieces that every watch collector at one point will consider. There is the other one, which is the Omega part. Um, and the, of course, there is, you know, Tag Heuer and what else have you. But I will argue till the day I cannot breathe or argue any longer that eventually there will be the moment where you are looking for a Submariner 40 millimeter design. OK, now this is the reason why I picked that. Now, uh, I do happen to own a Rolex 40 millimeter Submariner, and it is one of my all time favorite watches. I love it. I love the design. I love the bracelet. I love all there is to love about it. It is like, it doesn't matter what you wear it with. It does not matter. It is a unique piece. And that the that, 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 that whole thing about the design is just, it, it just screams infinity. It just screams, it, it it will never go out of fashion. And so, and, and it has something to do with the case of how they've structured the case, how they've structured everything on it. It's simplistic, but it's absolutely fantastic. Now, and here is where we get to the cream of the crop. The one we're gonna look at now is Invicta, and it's the Pro Diver, okay? The Pro Diver is, I would almost say, is like, celebration of <clears throat> the Submariner, okay? It is 40 millimeter, absolutely spot on on, on, on on all of the things that is making the Rolex so unique. Now, it is obviously a fraction of the price. I think I picked this up for like 125 euros, postage included, which is really, really a good price. So what you are looking at is a, a substitution or an alternative for a Submariner 40 millimeter without breaking the bank. That's our entry point, right? The entry point is um, we, we are, we're going to look at, at, at something where, where we know we're not getting the real thing. We know that. The real thing is the Rolex. We're going to look at is this actually something that is great, good looking, and it's something that we would actually want to look at wearing you know whenever now so if you remove if you remove invicta <laughs> this is going to be a bit tricky if you remove evicta the brand from uh from the the, the the watch is the pro diver is that a great piece is it worth your money um and is it worth it when you're looking for the 40 mill 40 millimeter uh sub that is the question. The question is not whether we would prefer to have uh, a Rolex. That's not the question. The question is not whether we would want to buy something else. Uh, do we want to have a G-Shock? That's not the question. Because you consider buying Invicta Pro Diver because of the resemblance to the 40 millimeter sub. That, that, is, that is the reason why you do it. So now the question is, does it hit home? Is this something that is close enough to say, I'm going to buy this one for 100 bucks versus buying something for 10,000 bucks and I'm going to be happy with that? That is really the question. What am I getting for it? And so uh, that's really our starting point. So 
with no further ado, yellow uh, is not always my favorite color, but in this case, um, the boxing in Vector, right? Uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's a solid one. It's actually really, really a good box, right? Um, oh, disclaimer, I have to admit one thing. I couldn't help myself, so I did a bit of an upgrade to my, uh, to my Invicta. You will see that, okay? So we open it. It's empty because I'm doing upgrades to it or I did upgrades to it already. But let's 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 get started, okay? So one of the things, and I now I, it's a dead giveaway because I'm I'm gonna show you the upgrades that I've done, right? So one of the, the updates that I've done is I've changed this one. Absolutely right, right from the beginning. Um so when you are looking at the luck on this one and you're looking at the shiny part in the middle uh, versus so you can see that like the whole middle joint here is shining while the other one is matte um, for me and I've, I've talked to a couple of friends of mine that, that absolutely do not mind it I think it looks ridiculous I don't like it at all and I think I've got a better alternative to it um, it's obviously it's it's hollow the lock it's hollow because how much you know, solid are you going to get for, 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 for 100, 110 bucks? Not a lot. The locking mechanism, solid, works. It's not too much. The wiggling power, it's there, right? A good test is always to try and see with your, with, 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 with the joints, how, how far apart they are. Like, it, it, is it perfect? No, it's not. Is it good enough? Absolutely. Absolutely. I've just decided to take it off right from the get-go because I simply don't like it and I had an alternative at home that was much, much better, in my opinion. That's my only opinion, that's my personal opinion, but, and you'll be the judge of, of, of that is actually the, uh, the, the truth or not, right? So, now, a couple of points about what we're actually getting ourselves into um, is case um, is 40 millimeter, as I mentioned, um, you do have it at, uh, you do actually have it with NH35, well-known favorite of ours, right? A lot of micro brands are using the NH um, for a really, really, uh, you know, like like for, 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 for many different models, very successful. It's a thing that works, okay? Let me put it like that. It is, a, it, it's a thing that works where, uh, you know, surprisingly well, uh, performance in terms of plus minus uh, what is it 20 like I have it at plus minus uh, 20 to 40 seconds every day okay so it's not like for that amount of money it's not like hey you wake up one day and it's the first of January you wake up the second day it's the third of February right like that's not gonna happen um, it's very very good mechanisms or mechanics for the price that you're buying it for perfect and one little thing that is, and this is this is one of the things that that I observe with um, Invicta as well myself, is that um, although NH thirty five um, the mechanicals and beautiful all of these different things, it comes at a very um, it comes at a fair price I would say like I I don't know if it's cheap or expensive but obviously it's not as expensive as in house and all of these different things but what you see is that a lot of micro brands then put a bit of design work on top of it. Uh, and then call the watch a 500 euro watch, a $500 watch. Invector doesn't do that. They are very, very much true to the pricing calculation, the pricing model, and that is you get quality that you pay not a lot for. So the movement is there. Crystal uh, mineral, uh, water resistant, take that with a grain of salt. Water resistant, uh, 200 meters, um, but, but let's be honest. For a hundred, hundred euros, would I go and do extreme diving down to 200 meters with it? Most probably not. Most probably I would take one of my real divers watches and say, that is performance. They are tested there. Water resistant, they are, right? This, this piece is water resistant. There's no doubt in my mind. Is it something that I would risk, uh, you know, jumping in the ocean and all of these things? No, you go for a bit of a swim, okay, fine. Um, so it is what it is, right? Again, there, there, there's a limitation to what you can get for the price that you pay. Um, and so, so there is a lot of, I mean, for me, there is really a lot of great, great things, um, about, about the watch, right? Um, as I said, I'm not a big fan of the lock. I'm not a big fan of the basil in general. I just, no, 
Um, and I think it's because maybe I'm spoiled. When you have the real thing and you've gotten used to that, it's very difficult to go back to something or go to something else that is a tiny, tiny fraction of the price. It is just, yeah, maybe I am a bit spoiled. And you know what? So be it. But uh, let me get the piece and you can also see how I have done a small little modification, which in my eyes, I absolutely think makes it look so much more impressive. So what I have done is I've taken off the cheap uh, basil, the, the, uh, the, the bracelet, like the, the flimsy, blech, that thing. And I actually had a NATO strap, like I think they refer to it as James Bond. I don't know why. Uh, there is no 007 on it, but whatever. Um, but I had a NATO strap and the minute you plug on the NATO strap, I think that it instantaneously look much more appealing, a lot more appealing. So it's just such a little change and it just makes such a big impact on the whole piece. Now, here it is. That's what it looks like. Now, I haven't set the time, I haven't set the date because I wanted to get to you guys and make this as soon as possible. And look at that. Oh my God. Now, this is actually not half bad. So this is actually the NH35A um, and it is, it runs. It runs like it's supposed to, right? It runs like it, 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 it it's working. Now, one of the things I, again, like, like look at that, 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 the sizing of it, right? I think it's 15, 14, 15 millimeters as well. So everything is absolutely in order. But if you're looking at the case, this is very, very close to uh, somebody, for the untrained eye, I would say, to say, are you wearing a Rolex? I'm, I, I'm not kidding you. I have had that experience already. Now, I am saying untrained eye. Um, because the minute you get closer to it, there is one of the things I absolutely, absolutely dislike. And that is, why do you need to write that there? Like, honestly, that for me is just nonsense. Now, like everything else with the piece, it's fantastic. Um, there are some, obviously, there is something with... Um, um, with the floor and with, with the illumination and all of these different things, there is something with uh, the casing. They like there are minor things where you're looking at it and you go like, yeah, that's for, for, for like that, that that's to save money, right? Um, and so, yeah, okay. So the Cyclops is that cool? It is. It is. It gets the job done. Is it perfect? No, it's not. But it, it's it's I would say close enough to being great. Um, and 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 again. You know, it, 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 it just, this is, it's, 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 it's really, really great. Um, and it's fine. It's fine that, that, that you're taking it down a notch with price, uh, all of these different things, and then negotiating a bit on, um, on, on other aspects of it. Uh, let me get off this beast here and stick it on. And then let's see what it looks like. Um, so when you, when you get it on, like Donkey Kong, bad joke, bad joke, right? It's, there is something magic about 40 millimeters, right? There is something magic about it. And that magic is, it just sits as it's supposed to, right? And it's not too big, it's not too small. It's just that, that that's, that's the thing where 40 millimeters just bang, it just sits as it's supposed to. And that there is, what it looks like. You want to tell me that's not cool? Oh my God, that is cool. That is not only cool, but that is super cool. I am now looking at it very, very close and I am blown away with how cool it is. And again, I have to say, ladies and gentlemen, the coolness factor of a 40 millimeter SOP, okay, for a hundred euros. And it looks this cool just with, in my opinion, just with a small little change of a NATO strap on it that get, will set you back, what, 20 bucks? You get a gorgeous piece. You get absolutely gorgeous piece. A piece that is worth 
a lot more than what you're paying for it. So am I excited about having this piece? Am I excited about buying this piece and having it in my collection? Yes, absolutely I am. I think, to be honest, it is very, very comfortable to wear because it's a 40 millimeter. It's very, very comfortable to wear because it is the sweet spot, right? You put it on, it's not too big, it's not too small. 38 millimeters, there, 40 millimeters, mwah, perfect, sits. The, 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 the NATO strap just gives it that extra coolness factor that for me just puts it as, you know, the, fair, uh, the, the, the famous uh, cherry on top of the cake. Looks really, really cool and in, like, 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 I really, really love it. The, the black on black, I think it's so cool. I mean, that, that like, it reminds me of, um, it reminds me of the Rolex that I have. It does, it really, really does. Um, small little concerns or small little issues where you're like, eh, is really the, 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 the I, would, I was about to say the writing on the wall, but that's not the case. The writing here, which is, ah, let's not overdo that. Um, and it's, it's, I mean, it's, 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 it's pretty, pretty cool. Now, the aspect of, or the point that you get mechanics, right? And that it's full blown working. It's, you know, semi open. It's not skeleton or anything like that, but it is open. The, the back case is open. So you can see all of these things is really also a testament in my opinion to the fact that this is mechanics that works right because otherwise you wouldn't want to showcase that that it, it's 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 rubbish and it's not working um so in my in my opinion um when you're looking for an alternative to the sop 40 millimeters this is as good as it gets because here is in my opinion where invicta has done an incredible job and that is they are staying original to the design they are staying absolutely to the design they're not interpreting anything they, they're not they're not looking at it and saying well let's make it our let's make it a model that we have influenced no they're saying this is what it looks like the original one we are gonna do it for the amount of money that people will be able to afford like you know uh, at, at a fraction of the price what can we do to make it look as great as the original, but for a hundred euros instead of ten thousand dollars, a hundred thousand. Uh, sorry, for well, for a hundred dollars instead of ten thousand dollars or more. What can we do? How much can we get for that? And to be honest, for the pro diver, you get a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Love the design. Absolutely big fan of the design in itself. And and to be honest. If you're looking at some of the things or some of the pieces that Invicta has done over time, I would say, in my opinion, that the Pro Diver is one of the pieces that they are doing the best. It's my opinion, uh, but my opinion uh, is based on the fact that this is a timeless design, okay? This is, this is a design and, and a style that five years from now will be in fashion or not fashion, but you will be able to wear it. You'll be able to wear it uh, sporty, you'll be able to wear it elegant, you'll be able to wear it casual, you'll be able to wear it with whatever, okay? Whatever, because of the design is so flawless. And so you get that, you get the NH, right? Perfect working quality. You get a bit of negotiation on, uh, you know, um, um, what did I want to say? The, 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 the Cyclops, you get a bit of negotiation on um, uh, the, 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 the brushing, the Lumiere, uh, all of these different things. There is, there is a bit of negotiation. You give that away. Uh, so will this light up like a nuclear power plant during the night? No, it will not. It will not because that is expensive to actually do. On the other hand side, you also have the 500, 600, 700 watches that has the same problem. You know that you're not going to get this in this piece you know that you're not going to get it so you might as well not not expect that you're going to get you know a, a, a firework during the night with this piece you're not going to get it because it's too expensive to make it and that's okay um the, the, the look and 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 the feel of it is absolutely uh incredible the the, 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 the diving down to 200 meters no you won't get that as well you're, you're not going to get that you 
want to dive down to 200 meters, buy a proper, proper diver's watch. I wouldn't even risk a Rolex taking that down to, minus, to 200 meters or more. I wouldn't do that. Um, I would really, really get a real diver's watch that is made for extreme conditions. This, I, why would I? Can you make it wet? Can you take it swimming? Yes, of course you can, right? It's water resistant. It's all of these different things. No problem there. Um, so uh, it, I, I, it just strikes me that when I look at it, it's just, it's, I mean, look at it and look, look what it would look like just out of pure curiosity. Uh, look what it would look like if we put on this one here. I just, like, that's what it looks like. Look at that. Ich, ich, ich. Like with the, 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 oh, and then like that. I think going with a NATO strap on the Invicta is so small of an upgrade, but I just think that it makes such a big difference. Such a big difference. Um, the question that we asked in the beginning or what we're looking at in the beginning is, is the Pro Diver, Invicta Pro Diver, um, a good watch? Now, the answer is, in my opinion, absolutely. Um, when you are looking at what you're getting for the amount of money you're spending, I actually think it's a really, really good investment. I think the value versus the price of it, I think it's not comparable at all. Um, the NH35A does the job. It does the job. Absolutely. It is, it's known to do the job, right? It does what it's supposed to do. Perfect. Design-wise, Brilliant. So you are looking at a watch that seamlessly, uh, seemingly is dirt cheap, but with a small couple of adjustments, now the strap, for example, makes it look so much more elegant. And in my opinion, just takes the price up so much more. You have a lot of quality in this piece. You have a lot of quality in it. That, 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 that aspect that they have been so true to the original 40 millimeter sub from Rolex is just, it, it's, it's, it's something that you should take a moment to appreciate because they are not interpreting anything. Now, they do interpret a lot of other things with other pieces that they have in their collections, but this one is one where they've said, let's leave it alone. Let's just go with, uh, let's, let's just go with the look and feel of the, 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 the sub and get as close as possible to it. And they are damn close to it. That is one of the things that I really, really appreciate by, uh, by Invicta. Now, I love my Rolex up. Absolutely love it. It's a beautiful piece. It's, you know, it's just a pleasure to wear it. It just sits like it's supposed to. And everything around it is just amazing. I understand why it is such a popular piece. I understand that. Now, is this a good alternative to it? For 100 euros, it's an incredible alternative. Absolutely incredible alternative. It is not Rolex, but that you know from the beginning. But is it an incredible uh, piece for the price? It's fantastic. It is absolutely amazing. Now, the question really is, um, and, and this is this this is this is one of the things that then you know once we've answered the question of like is it quality or um, is it something that's worth your money your time and all of these different things and the answer in my opinion is yes yes and yes the second thing is then why is it that there's so many people that are against Invector and you know what it is that 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 they're selling uh, or producing and all of these things good question look at it from your own perspective why is that. I think it is because people are not comparing apples with apples. If you are looking at this one here and you're saying, I am looking for a piece, I'm looking for a watch that resembler, that, or that is similar to the SOP 40 millimeters. Is this a good one? The answer without doubt has to be yes. There is no debate. But if you are saying, is this the one I should buy? People will say, well, you can get a Casio. Well, you can get a Seiko. You can get Citizens. You can get this. You can get that. But that's not the question that you want to ask. The, 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 is this the best or one of the best alternatives on a Submariner 40 millimeter? And the answer is yes. Full stop. Now, with, 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 with Invector itself, I think it is because they've got Frankenstein's monsters in terms of some of the collections. They've got clunky pieces. They've got 
terrible pieces they've got, ugly pieces they've got, you know, the whole ball roll. But this one is one of the most fantastic pieces they have, if, if, if not the best one that they have. Price versus quality, uncomparable, absolutely uncomparable. Now, um, when you ask yourself the question, should I get this piece? Ask differently, am I going to regret not having it? And I think you are. I think you're going to regret not having this piece. If you can afford the Rolex, get the Rolex, right? I mean, like, <laughs> I mean, why, why wouldn't you? If you can afford it, get it. If you can't afford it, get this one. Absolutely, absolutely recommend that you get this one because you're not going to regret it. I don't think you're going to regret it because for a hundred bucks, what can you regret? What can you regret? I'll tell you what you can regret. You can regret that you didn't get it earlier. That's it. That's what you can regret. I should have gotten it earlier. Yes, you should have, but you didn't because you were listening to everybody's subjective opinions. Now, what does that teach you? It teaches you to assess what you like and what you're looking for. That's what it teaches you. It teaches you for to, 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 to understand that there's so many uh, trolls, opinions, and what have you online that will all tell you that they're right and you're wrong. That this is bad and this is good. But by the end of the day, what is the reason why you collect what you collect? Or what is the reason why you wanted to have it in the first place? If the answer unequivocally is, it's because I can't afford the 40 millimeter sub and I want to have something that looks very, very close to that. This is the one that you're going to get. Easy peasy. Now, last but not least, it is by the end of the day, your decision. There's no doubt in anybody's mind that it's your decision to be made. Are you going to invest in this or you're not going to invest in this? However, you do need to start to really explore and take a bit of, I wouldn't say risk, but you need to dare to in, in, look at your style. What is it that I feel comfortable wearing? What is it that I think I squeeze it a bit extra uh, out of my comfort zone, if you will? What is that? And so one of the things, like once once you start to look at your choice and your style and you start to explore that, right? That's the reason why we call it Style Explored. What you find is a world of cool, cool stuff where price is not necessarily the thing that 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 is you know a hindrance price becomes a friend of yours because very very decent 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 prices and you know it, it becomes where like it's it's a new world opening up for you if you dare to explore your own style if you dare if you just want to go with mainstream and you just want to listen to everybody's subjective opinions about different things and not make up your own mind, do your own homework, study, research, you know, and, and get a flair and understanding for it, then, okay, that's up to you. In my opinion, 100 euros, for some might be expensive, for others, it's not very expensive. This is a watch that you're going to get a lot of fun out of wearing. You're going to have a lot of good times with it. It's going to fit any occasions that you're going to have. Wearing a suit, you can wear it. Uh, wearing a shirt, t-shirt, you can wear it. Jeans, shorts, whatever you want to wear with it, you can wear it. And it's going to look absolutely fantastic. So that is absolutely unique. It is universal. Um, all in all, I would say, I would say the Pro Diver delivers on 9 out of 10. I don't know what they are, but like that's what we're saying, right? It's a 99%, uh, 90, 95% match on, on these things. A lot of it has to do with you get so much money, uh, so much watch for very, very little amount of money. It's, it's, it's a no-brainer for me. It is a no-brainer. I'm happy that I have it in my collection. I'm going to have a lot of fun with it as well. And uh, I might take it for a swim as well. Not a dive, but a swim, right? So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, it's always, always a pleasure. Uh, to receive your emails, to receive your messages. Um, it's always fun to uh, to see comments. So keep up with, with the comments as well. Love that. Um, of course, if you like what you see, don't forget to click like. Don't forget to uh, give me a comment or thumbs up on that one as well. A bit of uh, emoji fun as well is always good. Uh, share and don't forget to subscribe as well. Till next time, my friends, stay safe, have a good time and see you around.